earlier to promote the show, I had posted my thoughts on academic and non-academic education, asking what it means and why is it seemingly more important than going to school. Because in my opinion, a lot of people have degrees they don't use to earn a living. I'm going to use myself as an example, because as a product design graduate, I've never actually worked as a product designer. I then got a response from one of our viewers who had a contrary point of view. I'm going to read his message. Good morning, Pharaoh. I beg to disagree slightly. The school and degree you earn prepares you for whatever you want to do in future and not necessarily your degree. E.g. some universities will accept a first class mathematics degree to read law because of some analytical components of maths rather than figures. You can tell that this viewer is very academic and super intelligent. And I've been told to ask my guest if this is correct or not. But before I do this, let me introduce her. Ife Y. Godalo is an accounting graduate from the University of, Unsuka, on, University of Nigeria, Unsuka. She's a self-driven entrepreneur with over 35 ex years experience within the interior design, furniture manufacturing and retail, and affiliated industries. She was co-founder of Design Options and is currently the CEO and founder of DO2 Designs Limited. Ifaiwa is also the immediate past chairman of the Board of Trustees of Women in Management, Business and Public Service, WIMBIS, and sits on the Board of Trustees of the Interior Designers Association of Nigeria, IDAN. Welcome, Ifaiwa. Thank you, Pharaoh. It's really quite cool to have you here. <laughs> oh my God! I'm also a founder. I'm one of the founders of Wimbis, not just the past chair. True. Yes. 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 And that. <laughs> um, Ifeiwa is awesome and amazing. And I'm just so happy that you're here with us today. Yeah, so I'm the so first thing I want to ask you is, what does academic and non-academic, what does academic education mean first? Okay. Ad academic education is what you're taught in schools. Mm -hmm. Basically, whether it's primary school, nursery mm. school, so your formal education. And then non-academic education. Acad academic. Non-academic education mm. is what you're typically not taught in schools. Yeah. Unconventional. Mm -hmm. It's unconventional. For me, it's what you're taught, what you learn at home, mm -hmm. and what you learn pretty much from your family mm. and your social network. Mm. So that tends to lend to your cognitive skills, your social skills, mm. your emotional skills, and... And it sort of forms the foundation of who you really become. Okay. That's what it means to me. Okay, that, that, is, that actually makes a lot of sense. So I'm going to take you back to the question that I was asked about. Um, I'm going to read parts of it again. Okay. The school and degree you earn prepares you for whatever you want to do in future and not necessarily your degree. E.g. universities will accept a first class degree in a certain subject for another subject. Yeah. Because this was in response to me saying academic education is not necessarily the most important thing. Non-academic education is. So what are your viewpoints? On what? Whether on what the, what the viewer has said about the degrees being more important. Oh, definitely not. How so? I'll tell you why. First of all, a lot of Nigerians sometimes are challenged with the English language, which is our lingua franca. Mm -hmm. And that is because though you find that those who are most challenged they learn English as a second language. I learned okay. English as my first language at home. Okay. okay. I learned my native language as my second language. Okay. So you see that foundation, what you learn at home, there's this famous saying I have that drives my husband up the wall. Children live what they learn mm -hmm. and they learn what they live. Mm -hmm. So what you learn at home is what really defines you. Now, I'm not, saying, I'm not saying that academic education is not important, but you'll find that with some of the banks, when they take you on, they'll take an English graduate and they'll just train you for what they need you to do. Mm. So technically, um, that course that you study, I'm an accountant. Mm. Mm -hmm. And now I've been manufacturing furniture all my life, yeah. almost 35 years and counting. So it's not the education. What I learned in school was for me, for, okay, let me take it a little way back. I, learned, I, I knew when I was much younger that I was mm. going to go into business. Mm. So for me, accounting was that foundation. Mm. Why did I go into business? Both my parents were in business. Mm. Okay, so the education for me 
in university particularly, education teaches you the consequences of your action. Actions. Okay. So it's not so much about learning. To, there, there are two types. Mm -hmm. So let me, go, let me break it down a little further. So for, if you're an engineer, obviously you have to study engineering. Mm -hmm. You can't learn it as a course. So for this strict skills that you need mm -hmm. to carry out a job, you must be properly educated. Mm -hmm. But in the balance, even with that education, if you don't have the foundation of your non-academic education, mm -hmm. yes, you might be a very good engineer, but you may not go far because mm -hmm. your interaction with people, your mm -hmm. so, what I call your socio-emotional skills, mm -hmm. your person skills, mm -hmm. that is actually what takes you a lot further. So obviously True. a pilot must, go to, must learn how to fly a plane. Mm -hmm. But for me, there's, in life, there's, there's a lot more to life than that so it's that, balance it, that that really does make sense so so let's take it back a little how has non-academic education impacted you how did it impact you as a youth and how has it influenced your leadership style today okay how did it impact me as a youth my non-academic education i'll give one example when i was in my late teens early 20s when there was a situation my, I would step back, and my father would say to me, he kept saying to me, Ifema, you're a leader, you're a leader. So he instilled in me the fact that I was a leader. And I said, no, daddy, I'm not. It's if there's somebody else to step in, I, would, I won't. But if there's nobody, then I'll take charge. So he said, no, my daughter, you're a leader. Mm -hmm. So the fact that I have, so I learned my leadership skills from home. Not, okay. I didn't learn them in an institution okay okay and then sorry second part of the question <laughs> how has it influenced your leadership style well that i just answered yeah, that. yeah. and how did it influence me as a young person mm -hmm. that was it as well yeah. so as i'm the first child of mm. my parents i'm the first grandchild of mm. on both sides of my family mm. so my mother instilled in me the sense of responsibility that goes with that mm. so that's where the leadership Mm. comes from mm. so not i didn't learn any leadership any skills in school, in school formally no. okay so for for younger people who may be watching can you give me some examples of non-academic education that we all need you know in life non-academic education as they, as they say charity begins at home mm -hmm. so non-academic education from your when you're younger it comes from your parents. I'm trying to think of a strict example. It's just in the way you're brought up. Mm -hmm. you're, okay, I'll give an example. I have a daughter. Mm. Even though she's an only child, mm. when, she, when her cousins or her young friends, when she was five years old, four mm. years old, mm. um, came to visit, anyone who was younger than her, I made her understand that she was responsible for that person. So okay. even though she's the young, one of the youngest in the family, in the extended family, mm. She has a sense of responsibility. Mm. As she got older, I made her realize that ultimately she's responsible for her dad and I, when she, the, the older she got. Mm. So that's an example. Responsibility is one of the things you teach. Mm. You, can, you don't really teach it. You live it and, you sh and then you, they imbibe it. Mm. Um, thinking of another example of non-academic, well, leadership mm -hmm. is, is another example. Um, empathy. Empathy is very important for leadership. So okay. empathy is another example of mm. what you can learn from home. You watch, your, so? you watch your parents. Um, okay, um, I'll, I'll touch on something else later. But you watch your parents, you watch your family, you watch mm. your, your village, mm. and you see how do we interact. If somebody is, if there's a loss, what mm. is their reaction? Mm. If somebody is in need, what mm. is their reaction? Mm. And it will be very difficult for you to have lived this all your life and then come out and you're an extremely selfish person. And for sure. leaders, for me, leadership, the, the qualities of leadership, one of them is um, empathy, of course, mm. selflessness. Mm. You put others before yourself. Mm. Those are the kind of lessons, non-academic lessons, mm. that will help you. And most importantly, in both forms of education, academic and non-academic, you need to learn the consequences of your action. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot one very important one, mm. communication. Mm. If you notice, particularly now with the mobile phones and all mm. the all the gadgets, the gadgets <laughs> the mm. devices mm. you know you find um now the young ones are just constantly like this yeah so i remember years ago when somebody said to me wow i just came out of a room and there were four young people there and they were all talking to each other but they were communicating on their gadgets oh, so wow. that social interaction is being eroded by this these devices mm. communication is very important one of the things I struggle with in my business you send emails they see it they don't respond 
you speak to them, they stand and they look at you. Mm. When we were younger, you, could, you wouldn't get away with that. But no. how, how do you teach, how was it taught in, in the in older days, days to communicate? Okay, let's talk about my days, because mm. I can talk about my days. Mm. We're not allowed to talk about it anymore. They call it child abuse. Okay. But your mother asks you a question. She asks you a second time, and you're standing and looking at her. I'm sure you and I, I can imagine what would have happened there. <laughs> she owes you. Uh, you say it. Let me not be the one to say it. But you know, but now it's not allowed. It's not allowed. And then we're complaining and wondering what's going wrong with our children. Mm. I'm not saying we must smack. But there have to be consequences to your actions. A lot of things that are going wrong, even in our country. It's because mm. there are no consequences. Mm. Human beings need to know that there's a consequence to every action. And for me, that is actually what both formal and informal education teach. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> that's that that that's the reason why I'm 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 speechless is because the world we live in today, mm -hmm. there are no consequences for go. a lot of the actions totally. that people take. Totally. But then everybody is gung ho about you have to get a first class, you have to be you have to get an A, you have to be the best in school. <gasps> anymore not as much as they were in our days mm. right now because like in my day it was mm. all the uh, formal skills uh, uh, formal education accountancy engineering law medicine that was it but now there's such a wide variety of careers mm. wide there's so many options mm. so it's not about yes our parents still want us to do well what it is is I think that parents and generally people want you to apply yourself so okay. if you've done your best, and your best is a D, mm. it is what it is. Mm. But if I know, and I tell my, because my, I, I employ over 150 people, mm. and I tell my, especially my PAs, they laugh, and I say to them that it's when you don't apply yourself that I get upset. If I know you need help, I will help you. You can ask for help. The people don't even know how to ask for help anymore. I don't know the answer, and instead I run away, mm. and I hide, and I hope that when I hide, it goes away. And it never does. Yeah. That's exactly what I say to them. It won't go away. Yeah. The problem will remain there until you come and fix it. So that's does, another thing you learn from non academics. Yeah. So so is all of this the same? So teaching all these non academic uh, skills skills, is it the same as mentorship? In a manner of speaking. Now this mentorship thing is something I love. I've mentored so many people. Mm. That and um, I, I'd like to think that when I was growing up, there were the men, mentor has, mentorship and mentor, the word mentor has always been there. But it wasn't such a thing as it is now. Okay. The reason we're relying a lot on mentors for non-academic education is because a lot of us who are relying didn't get that education from home. So we're almost replacing it with mentorship. But there are those of us like myself who got mm. solid, I got a solid non-academic education. Mm. But I have still had a few mentors who, for me, they are people who I respect and mm. who, people who I would like to not fashion my life, but who I, would, I, would, I need to acquire more knowledge from. Okay. Okay? So they, they go hand in hand. I wouldn't say once you have a strong uh, non-academic education, you don't need, a, you don't need mentorship. Okay. But mentorship for me, like I said, I've mentored a lot of people. There's formal mentorship. I've mm. mentored with a few organizations I wouldn't mention, but I can mention Wimbis. Mm. I've been a Wimbis mentor. But there's also informal mentorship, which is just being around that person and just learning from that person. Mm. And in my own case, particularly, when I tell my story, I talk about, God knows, hundreds of young people who have gone through my stable, as I call it, mm. in, my, you know, in my business. Mm. And all of them are running successful um, uh, businesses now. Mm. A lot mm. of them are entrepreneurs. And I keep getting the same thing. Mrs. Zai, the lessons I learned from you. Mm. They have helped me in my business. They have mm. helped me in my personal life. They've helped me in relationships. Mm. Because I think, deep down, I'm a teacher. Really. <laughs> uh, <laughs> some of you may, may know what I'm talking about. But yeah. it's, uh, and so that's informal mentorship. Yeah. So, so yes. you see what I mean? So there's that mm. non-academic education that even my staff who I'm paying are getting mm. from me mm. or from mm. the environment. That, I, I, I guess that's what makes a good leader. Um, so that makes a lot of sense. So if you were going to 
if you were going, if you were speaking to a group of under thirty-year-olds, for example, yeah, what are the five lessons you would tell them? Three or five. I was just going to say, <laughs> you sure I have five. three or five <laughs> that you would tell them about the importance of non-academic education. Okay, I'll start with what just happened now. Mm. As children, I remember, all your mother has to do is give you one look, and you know what she's saying. Mm. So when you said five, I gave you that look, and mm. you caught it. That's well, non-academic. Yeah. You see what I mean? It's not yeah. taught in schools. True. Okay, so let me try and marshal my thoughts. Um, I would say curiosity. Um, if you're not curious, they say curiosity killed the cats, but, act, but information made her fat. Mm. So knowledge, you mm. have to be thirsty for knowledge. Mm. Okay, I find that people who want to learn, learn. And people who don't want to learn in the same environment, they're not going to learn because they just don't want to. Yeah. I would say, um, I would say for, oh gosh, I've lost my train of thought. So curiosity, knowledge, self-development. Okay. Okay, develop yourselves. So even as I am now, I'm still learning. Mm. I remember when the computer came out. In fact, when I was in university, that's when the computer came out. It was in a room as big as this studio. That was a computer. We walked there was a computer a, when you were in university? A room was it, the computer. Sorry, so, FYI, I'm asking this question because she's over 60. Just in case you didn't know. <laughs> but yeah. So we left. I, I, my, my, my faculty was in Enugu. Okay. And there was the University of Nsuka. Okay, so we left and went to Nsuka. And we, went, we just looked at the computer and we left. And that was computer education. Mm. Okay. So, and, um, so now I'm working with iPads. I'm working mm. with, you know, tiny bits of things. Mm. So I've had to learn and develop myself, mm. even for my business, to keep mm. ahead of the trends. Mm. So curiosity, knowledge, knowledge self-development, self empathy. Empathy. I think is one of the things you, you just empathy. need in I, life. I think empathy is a, is a harder one to grasp. Yes. Because not a lot of people even understand you what learn empathy it. means. It's so how do you even learn it? It's non-academic. Yeah, but who teaches you? The people, you know, they say surround yourself with the right, right sort of people. So if you see a leader, you choose your, you choose your mentors. Mm. They don't choose you. Mm. You see that you choose a leader and what they stand for. Mm. Then you will learn from them. This has been really, really good. And um, as always, we never have enough time. Yes. And we've, all, we've already <laughs> run out of time. Oh, this wow. has been long coming. Yes, it has. Um, yes, it has. So I'm really glad we did this. And I'm glad we talked about this particular topic because I think a lot of people need to understand that there's a balance in education. Totally. There's the formal one and there's the informal totally. one. Totally. So thank you so much, Ifemi Waigodalo. Thank it's you. It's been Farrah. pretty cool, haven't you? <laughs> I'm so glad to have yeah, actually made it. It's really, thank really cool. And thank well you. done. Oh, I love your show. You. Love, oh, love, love your show. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm blushing now. <laughs> <laughs> so we've come to the end. Um, and John, Helen, and myself are going to very, very quickly round off the show as usual. So please stay tuned for a few more minutes. Thank you for watching and see you in a few minutes.